In this experiment, first one in the organic synthesis section, we're carrying out a fairly simple preparation uh, producing cyclohexene from cyclohexanol. Now, this is quite a straightforward reaction. So, you start off with your cyclohexanol, and you should already have learnt that there's two ways in which we can dehydrate the cyclohexanol to cyclohexene either using concentrated sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid. In this experiment we are going to use the phosphoric acid as our catalyst. So basically you just add phosphoric acid to your cyclohexanol, heat it up for 15 minutes and you should get your product cyclohexene. However that's not the end of the experiment. As in most organic synthesis, it's not the making the product that is the difficult part, it's then extracting the product from the reaction vessel and purifying it. So first thing, once we've made the product, you're going to have to separate the cyclohexene from any unreacted cyclohexanol and the phosphoric acid via, by distillation. You will then further purify the product through solvent extraction and a further distillation. And finally, we'll record our percentage yield, uh, which all of that manipulation will probably be certainly well less than 50%. And then we'll get some evidence to suggest that we have actually produced cyclohexene by checking that it does decolorize bromine water. Okay, so we'll put the cork ring on the balance followed by well this is a hundred cubic centimeter round bottom flask in the instructions it says a 50 cubic centimeter but we'll just work with a hundred cubic centimeter doesn't make much difference so we'll then tear it and the easiest way to add the 20 grams of the cyclohexanol is just to measure out approximately 20 mils and that will be close enough to 20 grams but of course we'll measure what it is so wearing gloves because the cyclohexanol is not very nice add it carefully making sure you don't spill any down this side okay put it back on the balance and record how much you've actually added. So that was 18.81 grams. So my mass of cyclohexanol is 18.81 grams. I think if you have anywhere between 18 and 22 grams, that's fine. Okay, so I can take that off the balance now. Well, the next thing I have to do is carefully add some 85% phosphoric acid. Now this is very corrosive, so make sure you've got safety goggles and gloves on when doing this. So I've measured out 8 mils into a measuring cylinder and I'll just carefully add that. So it's with swirling, so just make sure it gets all well mixed up. Okay. So the phosphoric acid is the catalyst which is going to speed up the dehydration of the cyclohexanol to cyclohexene. So we also want to heat this up and uh, so we're going to add a few anti-bumping granules just to help spread the heat out. So we don't need many anti-bumping granules, just a, just a few. So we're now going to heat up the sample for about 15 minutes to give plenty of time for the cyclo cyclohexanol to be dehydrated to cyclohexene and we're then going to distill over the cyclohexene. So we're going to set up the distillation apparatus. So we'll move over here and we're going to be using this electric heating mantle uh, which is a very nice way of heating round bottom flasks as uh, it totally 
it heats it from all sides. So we'll put a reaction mixture in there. Then we need to, in here we're going to have our thermometer and this will go down to the condenser. So put that in there. It's a wee bit unstable so we'll clamp it. So we'll clamp that so it's nice and steady. This is actually quite footery so don't be surprised if you spend a wee while getting this all set up first time. I then get my condenser okay, and that attaches in here. Okay. Again we need a clamp stand to keep this steady. So, so reasonably fit it and we will eventually be collecting the sample here. Okay. Now we want the condenser to be water cooled so we put the water in the lower uh, port and it comes out to the higher one. So the lower one will connect to a tap and make sure this is going to sink. We don't need a very fast flow of water. So just a nice steady flow of water. We'll keep the condenser cool. Okay, so now I want to turn on the heater. So it says gently heat it for 15 minutes without boiling. Okay, so the side of the round bottom flask should probably feel hot. You should not see it bubbling but you probably want to get to the stage where you're seeing uh, some condensation on the side of the round bottom flask. So heat up to the point where you can see some condensation then keep it there for about 10-15 minutes. So I've been heating that for about 5 minutes so far and as you can see it's starting to get condensation running up and down the, or running down the sides of the round bottom flask. So I want to hold it at that temperature for about another 10 minutes before I start distilling it over. The sample has been heated gently now for about 10 to 15 minutes and I'm just slowly raising the temperature and once we get a temperature of about 70 degrees we should start seeing some of our product coming over and being collected in our vessel over here. Okay. So the instructions are that we should heat it very gently through 70 to 90 degrees and collect all the everything that comes over in that temperature range of 70 to 90. So I'm just going to increase the temperature a wee bit and we should be able to start collecting some of our product. The temperature's now reached 70 degrees so we start seeing some sample coming over. We want to spend about 15 minutes raising the temperature from 70 up to 90 and we'll just collect the sample that comes over in that area. So I have now distilled over my cyclohexene. So there you see roughly the amount of volume of cyclohexene that uh, was produced. And in the reaction vessel this is what the was left this sort of dark brown gunge. Now to be honest nothing much came over before 90 degrees so maybe slightly different from instructions I suggest you take the temperature up to about 90 degrees and as long as you don't let it go above say 95 just collect everything that comes over up to about 95 degrees I had to have it sitting at about 90 to 95 degrees for about half an hour to get all this over. So I imagine you're going to need to do something like that. Now, the cyclohexanol, if you remember, 
should not have come over because cyclohexane has got a boiling point of 160 degrees due to the due to it having hydrogen bonding between its molecules with the OH bond here. So the cyclohexanol had a very high boiling point and so very, very little of it should have come over into the reaction vessel at 90 to 95 degrees. The cyclohexane, on the other hand, which doesn't have the OH bond and so it's just London dispersion forces in between its molecules, had a boiling point of about 83 degrees. So, in the sample here, I will have the cyclohexane, maybe just a tiny amount of cyclohexanol, and maybe some water from the phosphoric acid, because we were quite near the boiling point of water. So, this is probably not quite pure yet. It's mainly cyclohexane with just maybe a tiny amount of water and an even small amount of cyclohexanol. So the next stage of the experiment, we want to get rid of that cyclohexanol and uh, water by the process of solvent extraction. So we now want to try and further purify our product by solvent extraction. So in here, we've got our cyclohexene, a little bit of cyclohexanol and a little bit of water. So we're going to take, care of that, take advantage of the fact that the cyclohexanol with its hydrogen bonding and the water are both water soluble, whereas the cyclohexene is not. So we'll pour the distillate into the separating funnel. Followed by an equal amount of saturated sodium chloride solution. So this is our aqueous solution in which the cyclohexanol and the water will dissolve. We use saturated sodium chloride because water and cyclohexene have too similar a density and so would not separate very well. By saturating the water with sodium chloride, we make the water, the aqueous solution, far more dense and so the aqueous solution will be lie underneath the organic layer. So we add about 20 ml of the sodium chloride solution. Stop the flask. And then we're going to shake it up. Okay, so give it a good shake. After a few shakes, you want to release the pressure because caused by the volatility of the cyclohexene. So shake it up again, release the pressure, and one more time, release the pressure. Okay, and then we'll clamp it and leave it for a couple of minutes for the two layers to separate out. So the saturated sodium chloride solution is more dense than the cyclohexene, so it will lie below the cyclohexene. And hopefully all the cyclohexanol and water will have gone into the aqueous layer, leaving a pure cyclohexene layer. So we'll just give that a few minutes to separate. So I've left it for a few minutes now, and hopefully you can see it's separated into two quite distinct layers. The bottom layer is the aqueous sodium chloride solution with our impurities in it. And the top layer should be our, let's get to be pretty pure cyclohexene. So I now just want to separate the two layers. So to remove the waste aqueous layer, I take the stopper out or the solution won't run out unless you had the stopper out and then carefully run off the aqueous layer. So do this very carefully, don't turn the tap fully on. Okay. Just let it come out quite slowly. And then slow it down when you get near to the interface between the two solutions. Okay, so 
nearly there. Okay, so that's the aqueous layer ran off. So this is just waste. Hopefully taking the cyclohexanol and water with it. So that can just go down the sink. And we'll run the cyclohexene into this conical flask. Then just get rid of any water that might be remaining in here. We add a couple of spatulas of calcium carbonate, which will absorb any of water remaining in here. So we stop this and give it a good shake up. And any water still in the sample will get absorbed by the calcium carbonate. Okay, so we just leave that to settle. And then the last thing we're going to do is decant off the cyclohexene and do our final distillation to get our final product. Right, so the final thing we have to do is, so we've made our cyclohexene, we've separated it from the reactants by distillation, we then purified it by solvent extraction and now our final stage is going to do one more distillation just to get it very 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 pure. So I'm going to decant this into this round bottom 100 cubic centimetre flask. Again it says 50 in the instructions but we just use 100. So by decanting you mean just carefully pour it in leaving the calcium chloride behind. Now, at the end of the experiment, you'll be asked why you didn't get 100% yield. And one of the reasons is that every time you transfer your sample from one beaker to another, a little bit gets left behind. And we can't wash it out the way you could with uh, volumetric analysis. So transfer losses is always one reason or in organic synthesis why you don't get 100% yield. Okay, I had a few bumping granules and we're then going to distill it carefully and according to the instructions we should collect what comes over between 81 and 85 degrees C and we're going to distill it into a pre-weighed flask so I've already weighed this and then at the end I'll weigh it to see how much uh, how much what total mass is and by difference and work out how much cyclohexene we've got. Again it suggests in the instructions you might keep this cold in an ice bath. I don't have one available today so I'm not going to bother using an ice bath. So again as it comes over a little bit of the cyclohexene may evaporate off which again will, account, will be partially uh, responsible for the less significantly less than 100% yield. So I'll now set up distillation and do that. So this is our final distillation for our sample. And we see the heated sample bubbling away on the left there. And we're getting our product, purified product collected over here. Now what I'm finding is that most of the product is coming over at a temperature lower than that suggested in the instructions. And the main reason for that actually is because this thermometer is sitting in a glass envelope that uh, the temperature it's recording is slightly lower than the real temperature. So I suggest you collect everything that comes over at less than 85 degrees. Don't collect anything above 85 degrees, but uh, just collect anything that comes over from the start to 85 degrees. And I think you'll probably find the vast majority of your sample will come over. So following the final distillation, 
I've reweighed the collecting vessel, which is exactly 50.00 grams, which means that I've got about just under 9 grams of cyclohexene. So finally, I just want to test whether or not it is unsaturated and will decolorize bromine solution. Okay, so I've transferred a little bit of my cyclohexene into a test tube. I'll then add a little bit of bromine water. Okay. And then give them a good shake up to check it decolorizes it. So, as you can see, the sample has decolorized bromine water. Thank goodness after all that effort. So the number of moles of cyclohexanol that I used was 18.81 divided by the gram for my mass of 100. So it's 0 0.1881 moles. One mole of cyclohexanol should produce one mole of hexene. So I should have 0 0.1881 moles of cyclohexene. So the mass of cyclohexene should be 2 0.1881 times its gram from a mass of 82. So I should produce 15.42 grams of cyclohexene. In fact, I've produced 8.78 grams. So my percentage yield was what I actually got over what I should have got times 100. That comes out at 56.9%, which is actually not bad for an organic synthesis. So, you then have to offer reasons why you didn't get 100%. Well, there's a variety of reasons. Maybe all the cyclohexanol didn't react. All the transfer losses every time you were moving your sample from one beaker to another. Evaporation losses, especially during the distillation stage and perhaps a little bit of the cyclohexene dissolved in the water. Not a lot, but maybe a little bit. So there's lots of reasons why you wouldn't expect to get 100%. But it's more important that you get a pure sample and one that decolorizes bromine water, so that was a bonus.